All right. Well, you guys probably know who I'm standing next to here with. We made the trek up here to uh, Streeter, Illinois, on our way to Chicago for IMTS. And I wanted to come by and visit with Mr. and Mrs. Pete and uh, visit with them, see their home, and obviously the shop. So Mr. Pete says that we can take a little tour through his shop and check out his machines and, uh, and his tools that he's got. So we're actually in his, uh, this is your garage that we're in right now. And he's got a few machines back here. But I think your main shop is the basement shop. Main shop right? is the basement. This is my studio fair weather shop that we're in right now. Okay. So a lot of the videos that, that you would see on uh, Mr. Pete's channel are probably filmed more in the basement because he's got some lays down there. I can tell that's where you're kind of honed in yeah. down there. So we'll, we'll go down there. It's just an honor to come here and, uh, and visit with him. And, you know, it's, for one, it's beautiful up here anyway. I actually, this is the first time I've ever been to uh, Illinois, and it's absolutely beautiful up here. The corn fields, all the farm fields, it really is nice. So it's a I'm beautiful area. I'm glad you like it. Yeah, I like it. it. Uh, you know, Adam's a southern boy from, yep. well, from northern <laughs> Florida, but that's still south of it's, here. Yeah, and it's, uh, there's a lot of people down there in the northern Gulf Coast, and you know about that because you have visited. But uh, I like being in these more farm-type communities because it's less congested. There's less people here. So we're really enjoying our time. We're just hanging out here. Uh, I did a little video with Mr. Pete a little bit ago. It's going to be on his channel where he did the question and answer. So be sure to check out Mr. Pete's channel if you want to if you want to see that interview. But we're going to walk around and just kind of check out uh, his machines because he says that he does not mind. I do not mind. It's All an right. open house. All right. So we'll just start right here in the garage, and I'm going to get behind the camera and just kind of show um, your machines that you have out here now. He's got these machines tagged, uh, who they were donated by. So this is a recent uh, South Bend lathe that you said that a viewer give to you. And it came from Florida. Yeah, that's Ju pretty Jupiter, cool. Jupiter, Florida. Jupiter, Florida. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Jupiter is a beautiful coastal town. Is it? I've never Florida. been there. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's uh, Rob, I believe, Deer Meat for Dinner. He's got a great channel, and that's where he's based out of is Jupiter, Florida. Really? Yep. So... You, you're going to be doing some uh, videos on this? On yeah, this I've already right got here. some videos in the can where I made some changes here. I put a different apron on. I changed this from a Model C into a Model B. Had to cut a keyway and a few things like that. So there's videos on that. All right. Very cool. Looks like a, uh, a nicely uh, well-maintained machine. He's got some more accessories there. He's going to be mounting the uh, Allure's tool post up there. All right, so let's move over here and check out these guys. We'll start with the little shaper. So this is a little South Bend, correct? Mm -hmm. Seven inch shaper. Okay. Seven inch South Bend shaper. It looks to be in good condition. Uh, Made the, in the 1950s. Okay. Now the one that's in your basement, is, mm -hmm. it a, is it a South Bend? Yeah, it's a little newer. It has the wider base and it has the built-in oil pump. But other than that, it's about the same. Okay. All right. These are cool little machines. I've never owned one of these small ones right here, but excellent machine for uh, home shop guys, home hobbyists. Mm -hmm. They're an absolute blast to run. You guys that watch my videos know I love my big G&E <laughs> Shaper. It's a fun machine to use. A little outdated, but they're still awesome machines to run yeah. and make a chip with. And, and they are very useful for certain jobs. And like they say, you can make anything you want on a Shaper except money. That's right, yep. We're going to figure out a way to uh, prove them wrong, though. <laughs> <laughs> so what is this guy here? Now, this is a clausing. This is uh, a clausing uh, horizontal mill. Okay. Relatively small, has variable speed, but it's a nice machine. I remember when you got this one. Mm -hmm. So uh, this guy donated this machine to you right yes, here, correct? Yes, uh, he's, okay. He worked for Ford up in uh, uh, Detroit. Okay. Great guy. He delivered it. He brought it here, unloaded it, and set it in place. I remember that. I, I, I and caught a big those box videos. of cutters as well. That, that's another. This is another nice size for a home hobbyist machinist right here. It is. It doesn't take up a big footprint. You can see it's uh, it's almost uh, it's almost cute in size. It is cute. <laughs> <laughs> but that that's very nice right there. All right, so we're going to move over here to this guy. Now, this is the first time I have ever seen in person a South Bend milling machine. This is uh, like your Bridgeport-style mill. 
but it's also a lot different in a way. Like this guy right here, it's got a hydraulic power unit yeah. that runs the feed on mm -hmm. it. And that's for the quill, right? That's for the quill. That is, uh, that is neat. I've never seen that before. Another interesting feature on this is the feed box right here. Now this controls your X travel, yes. table travel. Mm -hmm. So this way, but look at that. That looks like it came right off of one of their South Bend Lays, quick change gear box. Again, I've never seen one before, so it's just really interesting. And he's got a uh, phase converter down there to run it because it is a three phase. I love that it's got the Timken bearing equipped tag on there. Super cool. And this is long before digital readout, but the system of measuring here was trays with rods and a dial indicator. There's no indicator in there right now. Wow. Rather archaic, but like a jig bore. And there was one for the X axis as well, but that's missing. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, that was a real interesting way to, uh, to keep up with your measurements there with those rods. So does it operate good? I mean, does it get the job done for you? Yes, it's uh, a little bit. Here's one of the indicators that someone sent me. Okay, yeah. Cast iron, this is all cast iron. Yeah. And so it's protected. And then you use, tray. Uh, in the tray you use rods, mm -hmm. measuring rods. It yeah. can be very accurate. Oh yeah, that's a, that's a way of uh, measuring and doing offsets on machines I have never done before. I know about it, but just never had a machine. I never ran a machine that took that. So very cool, very cool to see this. So I think we're gonna move down to the uh, basement shop and we're gonna check out where all the, where most of his uh, videos are made down there. Yeah, All right. Pro probably 75% uh, are made down there. Show them this little bandsaw first. Okay. Yeah. I bought this at a garage sale. I know it's made in China, no, Taiwan. Taiwan. Yep. Craftsman professional, but it really is a good machine. It's metal cutting. It's I, I really like it. Cool. Those can be very helpful, especially when you just got some quick parts that you need mm -hmm. to come out here and cut. Exactly. Very helpful machine. I remember um, whenever this was a real popular line, the Craftsman professional grade. Mm -hmm. This was back in the 90s. Yeah. And, and, yeah, uh, yeah, this is probably about 30 years old. Yep. Very it's, cool. Mm-hmm. All right, so we've worked, it, we've worked ourselves down to uh, Mr. Pete's basement shop, and there's the stairs. So we are definitely in his uh, basement, and I got to say, this is, I, I'm told this a lot by people that visit me and see my shop, that it's amazing feeling uh, stepping into the shop that you've seen so many times on YouTube, and it's no different for somebody like me as well. So... It's, uh, it's great to finally be down here and seeing your workshop and your machines. And, and, you know, it's just, I'm a guy that loves machines and tools, so I enjoy looking at them. Kindred spirits. But you've got, <clears throat> let's just start right over here. So we've got your bridge port that has been in many videos over the years. And we, we talked about it. Uh, one of the unique things about it is just got a, a very short uh, X-Travel on it 32 inch 32 inch table mm -hmm. and then he's added this guy right here which is a foot brake so yep so that operates the brake up here that you typically reach up there and uh and push on and by the way it is kind of low ceilings <laughs> kind of <laughs> you're you scooping over <laughs> so there's this uh there's this light next to me I bumped my head on them many times already since being <laughs> down here. So I'm having to kind of make sure I keep ducked down a little bit. But uh, anyway, we'll kind of see, I keep, <laughs> I keep hitting things up here. But why don't you just tell them uh, what else you have down here, you know, for the audience, what machines. Uh, okay, we've got uh, all of the associated equipment you need in a machine shop. It's not glamorous, but a six by 48 inch Abrasive machine is incredibly handy. I just use it constantly. It's an yep. older machine from the 60s. Those are very popular though and, yeah. and well made. Oh, very well made. Original bearings. And I got this bandsaw. I don't like it nearly as much as the one out in the garage. The it, Craftsman? The Craftsman. This is a uh, Boyce, uh, 
Walker Turner, I believe, or Boyce Crane, I forgot which one. Okay. From the war. It had Bakelite wheels, and I changed them to aluminum wheels because they were cracked. Hmm. Okay. And over this way, we got half of a lathe, which is a hardened speed lathe, sometimes called a second operation lathe. Yeah. Really a I nice, think, a very accurate machine. Five C like collets. It looks like it's been well maintained here. Mm -hmm. I mean, everything looks great on it. Mm -hmm. I like your tubal crane right here. <laughs> this is really cool. <laughs> yeah. I'm old enough to where I need help. See, that'll help me change the chucks, the Absolutely. heavy chucks. And then I can uh, attach it also to the milling machine to change vices. Yep. Very helpful. Mm -hmm. So you mainly use this to uh, change out your chucks there mm -hmm. on the on the lathe. Okay. Yeah. Very cool. We'll pan over here. This is your Craftsman, Craftsman lathe, and I know you've done some modifications to this. 12 inch. He made the dial for it right here. That was the original that was that was on there, and he even played around with some of the uh, 3D printing, but mm -hmm. very professional, nice looking aluminum dial on there. Lantern tool posts. I still use a lantern tool post from time to time. Some people make fun of me. <laughs> <laughs> There's nothing wrong with that. They actually get the job done in fine fashion. <laughs> they do. I <laughs> see so you got lots of tools to uh, support the lathe back there. You've got a, a nice tool collection all right here on the wall for your, uh, for your lathe. Very nice. And then, uh, so over here, now this has got a, a little bit of a interesting uh, history to it. You want to tell them about your clausing lathe? This machine was purchased by the high school in 1980, the high school where I labored so many years, and I'm the one that wrote the purchase order. And about 35 <laughs> or 40 years later, it was declared surplus, and I bought it for a very reasonable price from the high school. <laughs> that is awesome. So you made the purchase order on this, ordered it for the school. You taught on this machine mm -hmm. for many years, and then you ended up buying it and bringing it home to use for your own personal work. Exactly. That is very cool. And it's still in pretty good condition. It was in storage for many years. Okay. That's always good. Less mm -hmm. wear and tear. Yeah. All the years it's in storage. Mm. Very nice. Well, you've got some uh, you've got some more machines over here. You got a couple of drill presses. I see a Walker Turner. We have another Rockwell Delta there. This is still my favorite from the 40s. Oh yeah. And I bought this from a teacher at the high school who had retired, and he was the one that repaired the musical instruments for the band. Huh. So there were no holes drilled in here till my sons <laughs> got a hold of it. Uh oh. <laughs> yep, they certainly put one in there, huh? <laughs> but you know, anybody that works in a machine shop knows that probably three fourths of what you do is drilling holes or forming holes some mm. way or another. It's yep. all about holes. So yep. I use these quite a bit. My There's bit. another one over there that came from the community college, but I think I'm going to sell it. It's a very good machine, but is this I a Rockwell? It's a Rockwell. I very seldom use it, but yeah. it does have the variable speed. Okay. Just one big hole that a naughty student drilled. <laughs> and they went all the way through the table with that. <laughs> that is funny. Well, and you certainly got all of the tools, toolboxes, and all the support, you know, equipment that one would need. I like your uh, Baldor belt sander there vast array of pliers and wrenches and screwdrivers. Mr. Pete's got lots of toolboxes. Open a few drawers if you want to, Adam. Lots of lots of tools. Look at that. <laughs> yep. We all have these toolboxes and they're all full of glorious machinist tools. <laughs> lots of sterret. Absolutely. Oh. That's the second one we've done. That's all right. It's from Horror <laughs> Freight. <laughs> yeah. Hey, did you notice I've got some stickers here, Adam? I did notice that. Check that out. <laughs> <laughs> I see you've got your Starrett sticker there oh, as well. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Decimal chart. 
You've got a few of those in here. Mm -hmm. I've noticed them kind of. I know you like those metal ones, don't hit, you? Hidden in the background. Oh, I do. I yep. think you got this one only with another name on it. L look at that. Yeah. Streeter Industrial Supply. Mm -hmm. That is cool. One of the things I love about collecting those decimal charts when we travel, though, a lot of people don't realize this. A lot of times those will have a name kind of related to the region that we're in. And I love that. So, yeah. you know, the, whatever state we're in is usually on that. It would be some kind of industrial supply house related to that region. Mm -hmm. So it's just a neat way to uh, kind of remember our trip, you know, and picking those up along our journeys. There, you know, years ago, I'll tell this to the audience, that uh, every Coca-Cola bottle, the little seven ounces, if you turn them upside down, the name of the local bottler was on the bottom. And that was fun to look at when you were done drinking the Coke. That's something I didn't know about. Yeah. That's very cool. Now, they don't do that anymore? No, those were returnable bottles, of course, at okay. the time. Two cents. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> nice fun fact. I'll have to remember that when looking when I'm looking at the old bottles in the antique stores. Mm -hmm. They'll be the short bottles. Yeah. Not the big ones. Yeah. We had the short ones in my... Uh, I got a Coke machine that, was, that my granddad bought, and it was in our shop. And I still have that Coke machine. Most people don't realize that because I put it in our patio. Mm-hmm but it had the short bottles and the tall bottles in it. So back there, I see all kind of tap wrenches and die stock handles. Yep. I, you, a, you've think, been collecting them like I do. Look at that. Look I at that nice green field right there. Still love got the, those, and I'm like you. I love that color case hardening. Yep. Whenever you see these at the swap meets, it's hard to not pick them up, isn't it? Oh yeah, you gotta stare it. That's why I got so many. How many do you need? But I I got a lot of them. <laughs> we need as many as we can collect, and one day, one day we'll we'll start selling them off to some other people. Another toolbox there, full of tools. You can see lots of toolboxes all through. I even like this guy right here. I've never seen one of these. Now, it looks like a Kennedy. Could have been made by Kennedy, but you said this is a Craftsman. Yeah, it's marked right. Craftsman on the top. Oh yeah, you got the tag right up there, Craftsman. <clears throat> That's a nice size little box. To me, mm -hmm. it's it's almost like a um, it's like a nice drill index, honestly. But you can certainly use it for anything. Just like he's got in here, he's got a lot of uh, punches and things like that. And and there's another Craftsman that looks like a Kennedy. This is one that you were pointing out, Rimline. I had not heard of that until you pointed that mm -hmm. out there. That looks nice. But that's about the. Uh, that's that's about well you've got the little shaper over there can we go check that guy sure, out sure <clears throat> this is most of the shop here pedestal grinder right there craftsman he's got another work area here and then this is his other uh shaper this is the south bend this is the newer version of the one that you have in the garage yeah right? it's about three years newer than the other one and notice that the base is wider Yep. And it has the built-in oil pump. Okay. This is from about 1956. Came from Bushnell, Illinois. Very cool. And you've attached this uh, little scale for digital readout on here? Yeah, I put that on. That's, that's here's nice. The, here's the readout. Yep. Okay. Well, that is a uh, certainly a nice, clean machine. Are these drawers for the tooling right here? Yeah. Open out. You get twist them. Twist them. Oh, okay. Twist and pull. Yeah, I've never, I've never seen one of these before till mm -hmm. now. That's off of a Ram truck. Ah, uh, it sure is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so convenient having your tools right here. Mm. Got the South Bend tag on it. Very nice machine. So this is the one that you'll keep and use for your work and your videos, right? Yeah, this is the star of my my South Bend shaper series okay this is where it was filmed right here yeah very nice certainly a nice clean machine mm -hmm. not not too well abused by students it came from a high school of course yeah well you've got another little work area right here and uh yeah this is something that mr pete was showing me earlier that's uh pretty unique now you've just got these on borrow these are right. on loan. Yeah, loan because you're going to be doing some video mm -hmm. on this. We'll go ahead and show you what's unique about these guys. Can you tell from here what's unique about that mic? Anyone guess what this is? Can you see the uh, the barrel there? So 
there's no numbers or anything on this, so these were made for a blind person, correct? Mm -hmm. So someone that's using these can feel this and actually count up what the measurement is. No doubt used by inspectors rather than blind machinists, I would think. Yeah. That has got to be a very unique set of mics. I have never seen one before until this set right here. I haven't so either. Probably um, special ordered from Sterrett's. Absolutely. And yeah. this is, these are old micrometers in a brand new Sterrett box. Yeah. Yep. Just yep. a month old, really. Yeah. You can certainly buy these from uh, Sterrett. They, uh, they make these and mm -hmm. sell them for, for their mic kit. So that's a really cool set of mics right there. It very, is. very interested in seeing that. And then this is a uh, another Gerstner tool chest behind it. Now you said you recently purchased this, right? About a year ago. Yeah, mm -hmm. and I actually took some uh, pictures to send up there to uh, Scott Campbell at uh, Gerstner. He's the president because I want to find out why this one doesn't isn't labeled Gerstner. Now, there's it, absolutely no marks on it, but the cover is marked Gerstner, but that right. doesn't mean that the cover came with it. We yeah. don't really know, but it fits like a glove. Yeah, but the clues to, to me that makes it a genuine Gerstner is if you do the obvious thing and you pull the drawers out, they look exactly like a Gerstner tool chest. They have the lot number and the drawer number written on the back by hand like all Gerstner tool chests. But in the bottom, in the bottom here, can we go ahead and pull this out? In the, yeah. in, in the bottom, it, there's not a Gerstner stamp in there, but there is a W121. Okay, so I have a feeling that this was part of one of their, I don't know, possibly national line of tool chests, but I'm not 100%. But um, we're going to try to find out from Gerstner themselves on how this one was actually supposed to be marketed whenever it was built and sold. And it's walnut, where we typically see most of them oak. Yeah. Yep. So this is certainly beauty. certainly nice box. This would be a beautiful chest for a woman to have on her dresser for jewelry. Absolutely. And accessories. Absolutely. That's uh, that's one of the things about the Gerstner chest is that they're not just for machinists. <laughs> they're for anybody, uh, hobbyist or People that want to store their jewelry in them, gunsmiths, anybody like that. That's uh, their chest are meant for anybody with a need to store precision or jewelry. And even the older ones are coveted by people because they have a, a beautiful patina to them and it's, everyone has a story to it. That's right. Yep. I just recently did a video on one that I found up in uh, Ohio and it has history of the previous owner in there and some of his tools. So I had a I had fun going through it and sharing that with the audience there. So it's a nice toolbox you got on your hand right there. Well, my little tour of Mr. Pete's machine shop is coming to an end. I think we're gonna go out there and uh, fire up the grill, maybe uh -huh. cook some cook some burgers. I'm getting hungry. <laughs> yep. So we're gonna. Are go, you gonna do the grilling? I will certainly help you okay. get them grilled. Yeah, he said he's gonna put me in charge and make me grill the burgers. So <laughs> I don't I don't have a problem with that. But um, we're, we're fortunate to be able to spend a little bit of time with uh, Mr. and Mrs. Pete. They're gonna come and visit us at the camp. We're gonna do a little bit of hiking out there at the, uh, at the state park. I can't wait. Yeah, that's gonna be a good time and I'm gonna, I'm gonna cook them a steak dinner. Ooh. So I'm looking forward to that. And then uh, once we're through that, we're gonna be heading uh, further north to Chicago for the IMTS show afterwards. But I certainly appreciate you giving us the invite to come and visit and see your shop and also to uh, have the camera there so that we can kind of share that with everybody. And I really enjoyed visiting with you and Abby, and it's just an honor for me to have you here in my home shop. Well, it's an honor to come and visit you, so we, we really appreciate it, and I really enjoyed it. So <laughs> we're going to close this one out, and uh, hopefully you enjoyed. And make sure you check out Mr. Pete's channel. He's going to have his interview uh, video, probably two videos on there, mm -hmm. of us, our little question and answer segment. And uh, that's it. So long. See you guys later. All right, well, Mr. Pete has joined us. He's actually, he's actually gonna be our guide today. He, is, he has spent a lot of time up here at Star of Rock over the years, done all the hiking trails, everything up here. He knows all about it and, and has experienced it. So he's gonna take us down into the uh, St. Louis Canyon. Is that right, St. Louis right, Canyon? Yeah. All right, 
and we're going to go for a little hike there. So, it's probably about three quarters of a mile from here, I would suppose. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, here we go. You got it pretty well marked. I haven't been in here for I think a couple of years. See, I didn't want you not to walk. Yeah. All these loops and everything. Yeah. I myself might fall. Don't fall. <laughs> no. That is quite a drop. I'm scared of heights, so I'm always a little uncomfortable. I hear you. I'm the same way. I don't. I don't do heights very well. No, I, I but know. I do much better if I'm actually standing on solid ground. You know, just kind of overlooking an edge. But I don't like being up high on buildings or structures. You know, you can go up on that Sears Tower in Chicago, or the Hancock Tower. And oh yeah. And you kind of walk out, and you can walk on glass. Well, you saw it down in <laughs> Memphis there at the Bass Pro Shop. Yes. yes. I couldn't go on that glass. What is it again? That that mining operation over there? Oh, uh, silica sand. Uh, okay. So they're, they're digging up these rocks and crushing them and grading it and sieving it and all of that. And, and it's it's used for many different industrial many. applications like but glass making. Glass making, uh, paint, and fracking. Okay. And thousands of other uses. Yeah. All right. I forgot to bring my walking stick. Usually I bring a what did your dad do? He was a shop teacher. Okay. His whole life. He had some industrial jobs too, but mainly a machine shop teacher. So that, that's how I got my start. All right, so we've made it to the section that takes you to the uh, St. Louis Canyon. Yeah, I don't remember how old those women were, but I think they were at least in their 70s. I think they were older, yeah, I'm not sure. That was a pretty good hike in the middle of winter for a, a three. Yes. There were virtually no fish in this Illinois River when we were kids other than suckers and carp. Oh. Now they do a lot of walleye fishing. You know, they cleaned it up. We must be getting close, huh? Very close. 200 yards. Wow, it's beautiful down here. This was the general area of okay. the murders around these little yeah. caverns, not really caverns, they're not too deep. But. Yeah, I think you're right actually. Yeah, I remember something about like that little hole area there where I think some, one of them was pulled up in there. Yeah. There are some pictures in that book that I gave you. Yes. Okay. But I don't remember just what. Not much water coming down. No. Well, this is certainly a very beautiful area to see. It's too bad that it has such a um, crazy history to it, you know. But uh, it's a great place. And look at all the sand. Yeah, it's like a beach. Yep, certainly like a beach just coming off of the canyon walls there. All the sandstone. I'm going to come over here and check out the waterfall. As far as I remember. Yeah. Yeah. So the the uh, I think it's called the murders at Starved Rock mm -hmm. or Starved Rock murders happened just right here, right here in this area. Because I remember seeing the waterfall. I believe it was frozen. There was snow. It yep. was all snow everywhere. And I think one of the victims were pulled up into that little area right there. So pretty pretty incredible to be standing here at a place that that happened. Um, I had read it was 1960. Is 1960 is when it happened. So it's about over 60 years ago now. Pretty incredible. I think our visit here at the uh, the falls of the canyon is about at the end, and we're going to start working our way back. Well, we're just taking it in, you know, spending a few minutes standing here and uh, just enjoying the view. This is uh, really spectacular. It. it I keep saying it, but it truly amazes me to see this <clears throat> and just cornfields just on the other side of it, you know, flat and cornfields. And all of a sudden you have this, 
that we're standing in. It's amazing. So certainly beautiful place. And it really has been a pleasure having Mr. Pete as a tour guide down here. <laughs> We finished. We made it back. <laughs> we made it back. That was a nice hike. That this was a great hike. Yep. I enjoyed it for a 79 year old man. I made it. Thank you for all of the information. It was very enjoyable. It was the best hike I think I've ever been on. Yeah, it's been a great hike. Yeah. We've been talking about a lot of interesting things throughout the hike, just different stories that, you know, Mr. Pete's life, things that he's experienced, things we've experienced, places we've gone. So it's been a really enjoyable day. I think we're gonna go back up to the lodge and uh, hang out get for a little water. bit, get yeah. some water. And we're gonna later uh, head into town into Utica and have some dinner there at the uh, Canal Port restaurant.